Okay, so now in this video, we will still try to form some more patterns for the matchsticks that we studied. So now we'll take different patterns and we'll see how we can reinforce our learning of variables. So now in this, we have to find out a rule for the C patterns that are formed below. So you can see that I have we have formed four types of C patterns and the way we approach about this is we make a table and we say how many number of C's are formed and how many number of matchsticks are required. So the way we can approach it is let me just change the color so that it's more visible to us. And okay, so the number of C's formed. So we start with figure A which says 1, then 2 C's, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So we are just taking it, actually it could go on more. And now we have, we'll find out how many matchsticks are required for each C form. So when we start here with the number that is a figure A, we see that we need 3 matchsticks. So we write the number of matchsticks required are 3. How about when the number of C's are 2? So you can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we need 6 matchsticks in this case. Then for when we have the number of C's as 3, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So for 3 C's to be formed, we need 9 matchsticks. And for 4, which is the figure D here, so we know that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. This is a dumb way of counting. But it is just to reinforce the concept that we are doing all these things manually if we don't have the rules. So for 4, we need 12. Now you can pretty much see a relation here between the number of C's formed and what is required. So you can see that this is nothing but 3 times 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Similarly, I can write that if I want 5 C's, I need 15 matchsticks. If I am writing 6, I will need 18. If I want to make 7 C's, we need 21. And if I want to make 8 C patterns, then we need 24 matchsticks. Now, can we find out and write a, num uh, write a rule for the number of matchsticks that are required? So we denote the variable m just for your clarity m as the number of matchsticks that are required and from this rule we know that the number of matchsticks are three times the number of c's form now we want to substitute a variable for this number of c's so we will take the variable n as we did in our earlier case so we'll write three times n okay or you can also write it as 3 n this means multiplication 3 times n so this is a rule that we can use to find out how many matchsticks are required when we want to form c patterns having said that let us look at another example now in this case we are supposed to form an f pattern using the matchsticks and uh, we, we have to find out the rule that what is the number of matchsticks required when I want to form a certain number of F patterns. So we proceed as we did earlier. We have made a table here and in the first row says how many number of F's formed. So we'll just write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we are just going to fill this table for 7 values of F or 7 times when, when we form 7 F's. Then now we proceed to calculate the number of matchsticks required when f is 1. So let us see this in the figure A where we have one f pattern. And when I start counting it is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I can straight away say that I need 4 matchsticks if I want to form one f. How about the figure B in which the number of f's are 2. This is number 1 and this other one is number 2. You can see these two f's. So now let us calculate. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So we need 8 matchsticks. When f's are 3, we can see in figure C, if you calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11 and 12, I need 12 matchsticks. What will happen when I want 4? As you know, I think a rule is getting clearer. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12. So we can extend this rule for number of Fs from 4 to 7. So 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 4 is 20, 6 times 4 is 24 and 7 times 4 is 28. Now can we write down the rule for the number of matchsticks required to form an F pattern? So in this case again we will use M as the number or M as the variable which is representing the number of matchsticks required that is N. And in this case we know that for each and every F form, additional F, we need 4 matchsticks. So for N F, N times F, so we will just take a variable called N which gives us the number of Fs and from that I can straight away write it as 4 times N or 4N. So this is an example, one more example of how we can arrive at creating a rule or generating a rule based on the observation. Now let me just try to do one more important discussion on variable. Now variable you should remember is a number and the basic operations that we do on numbers are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So if variable is a number then we can definitely do addition using variables and how do we do that? It's pretty much simple. For example, I can write that I want I'm adding some variable let's say 7 plus a. This simply means that this variable which is a number a is added to the fixed number 7. Another way of writing it is as b plus c. So what is this? This is nothing but addition of two variables b plus c. Then we could also write something as a minus 100 or let's say a plus 100 because we are discussing addition so we'll restrict ourselves to just discussing addition. So in this case I'm adding 100 to the value of a variable which is a. So the thing that I'm trying to say here is these are all valid operations that we can do on variables. This is an that is we can add variables because they are numbers. Can the same thing happen with subtraction? Yes indeed. We can subtract a variable from a number like 7 minus n or we can subtract a number from a variable like n minus 7 or let us say b minus 20 or we can also use it in 7 plus b plus let's say 8 okay so this d b n and all these are variables so we can do a subtraction using variables similarly we can go for multiplication using variables and i think the most common example that you understood was m equals 2n or that is when we wanted to form l l patterns and then m came out to be 3n when we were forming the C patterns using matchsticks and then M came out to be 4N when we wanted to form F patterns using matchsticks. So this is all multiplication. See 2N and 2 cross N is the same thing but it is just a convenient way of writing 2N or 3N or 4N. We can also do multiply a variable by itself which can be written as n squared. We can multiply two variables, different variables like a, b. Okay, so you can do this uh, multiplication as well. And you and I mean you, you can see that in the, the above cases we have multiplied variables with fixed numbers, so that is also possible. So variables are just numbers, therefore we can do this operation. And then the fourth basic operation is division. So as we discussed, we can divide variables as well. So for example, I can divide a number, let us say 100, by a variable, let us say f. I can do that. Or I can divide a variable by a fixed number, that is f by 100. 
I can do that. I can divide a variable with another one like a by b or f by g or z by a or whatever you can think of. Okay, you can also have uh, yeah, different uh, uh, ways to divide variables. For example, you can uh, have a negative variable. You can just write that minus a by b. This is also a valid thing. So the point that I'm trying to drive here is do not get confused because we have introduced a letter instead of a number. Just remember that the variable is simply a number and therefore we can do all the four operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division as we do for numbers. So in this video we learnt examples to find out rules for some matchstick patterns and then we also understood that since variables are numbers we can use them in normal operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and of course we will be discussing more about these concepts in the coming videos. See you soon.